Hi everybody, my name is Ryan Thomas. Today I am posting part two of the 2014 NFL mock draft. I posted the first part, um, posted the first part a few months back, and now I'm back with my newer version of the 2014 NFL draft, my mock draft. Um, we've heard a lot about the Houston Texans and what direction they're going to go in. They they will be the first team that'll be uh, quote unquote on the clock uh, as they have the first overall selection in this year's draft, finishing. 2-14 and 14 last year compared to the year before they were a playoff team uh, playing against the Patriots in the playoffs, which is a, a crazy one-year switch um, and, you know, going from that high to that low. Um, main reason for that was quarterback play. Matt Schaub uh, was traded actually this offseason to the Oakland Raiders for a, a sixth-round draft choice, and I was very surprised that they traded him for that little um, I think he still has some stuff left in the tank. He had a pretty bad season this year, but that's another story. Um, one would say that their biggest need is quarterback, but most mock drafts and most analysts and most people like myself would say that they should draft Jadavion Clowney uh, number one. Um, some analysts are saying that Jadavion Clowney is uh, not one that hustles and he's very uh, lazy and this season, his past season, uh, senior season in college was not impressive, only having three sacks, but uh, I really think that he's going to be a good player in this league. I think long-term, having that combination of J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney uh, at linebacker is almost too good for Houston to pass up. Uh, it would be one that would be a dynamic duo for many, many years, and it could lead them to being a powerhouse in the division. And you think about who they have to play, twice a year, Andrew Luck, uh, that would make things a lot easier for them um, going forward as a team, and Bill O'Brien is a uh, is a offensive coach, but, you know, for him to have that in stock already in J.J. Watt on defense, and then adding to that with Jadavion Clowney, both of them lining up next to each other, on either side of each other, uh, I think that would be really great for Houston. Uh, I have Jadavion Clowney now going number one compared to Johnny Manziel going number one to the Texans in my previous mock draft. Um, number two is the St. Louis Rams. They required, they acquired the second overall selection in this year's draft. It's basically Washington's pick, but they acquired that pick last year in the RG3 trade that enabled uh, Washington to get uh, Robert Griffin III, um, or in two years ago's trade. Um, yeah. Um, it's going to be a very interesting uh, choice for the Rams because Sam Bradford uh, blew out his ACL. Uh, I've heard rumblings about them trading Sam Bradford. I've heard uh, that they're very interested in guys like A.J. McCarron and Zach Mettenberger uh, and even Aaron Murray. Um, I'm not re Those are quarterbacks that are uh, second, third, fourth round draft choices um, on most boards. And I'm not really sure what direction they want to go in. Uh, my instinct would be that they paid Sam Bradford a lot of money. It was before the new collective bargaining agree agreement was signed a couple years back. Uh, he was drafted a few years before that, so he was one of the last rookies to get really big, substantial money, and I believe that you know now that they have paid him that much money, they're kind of stuck with him, and that's not really necessarily a bad thing. I think Sam Bradford's a good quarterback. He's had a lot of... Uh, unfortunate injuries, obviously the ACL, and he's had a lot of unfortunate coaching changes because the team hasn't done that well. Um, but they have a st st uh, stable head coach in Jeff Fisher, who was a head coach for the Oilers when they were in Houston and the Tennessee Titans for a long time. Um, he was out of the league for maybe even a year, and it didn't take much uh, time for him to get snatched up by the Rams. Um, but I think the the most beneficial pick to the Rams at this point would be to draft an offensive tackle. And there's a uh, connection between Jake Matthews, the Texas A&M tackle, uh, to Jeff Fisher, his dad or uncle Bruce, uh, with Bruce Matthews, uh, who played for the Oilers and the Titans under Jeff Fisher. So I think that that is too good of a connection to pass up for the Rams, similar to how I feel about the Texans and Clowney. Um, I see Matthews being that that staple left tackle for the Rams for many years to come. And they had also had a, a really solid left tackle in Jake Long, who they drafted first overall uh, a few years back. Or no, who was drafted first overall by the Dolphins, but they brought him in. And 
he had some bad injuries and stuff over the course of his time there. So they really needed to uh, re they really need to replace that position, and I think Jake Matthews is the best fit. Most analysts say that if he would have come out last year, he might have been a top two pick over Eric F or, uh, Fisher or Jokel. Um, so definitely interesting stuff. Number three is the Jacksonville Jaguars. I believe that their biggest need is a quarterback. I think that there there is hope for you Jaguars fans out there. I know that sounds crazy to say, but um, I think Gus Bradley is a good coach. I think his pedigree and his resume is impressive. Uh, what he did in Seattle with the with the Seahawks defense, obviously uh, he left his mark. Uh, them winning a Super Bowl without him there, but uh, they were in contention for for a long time without him. Uh, or with him as their defensive coordinator. Uh, so I definitely think that he is an up-and-coming coach. I like his defensive uh, attacking style. Uh, I think that he's going to want a Russell Wilson-type quarterback. He wants to model the Jaguars after the Seahawks. And I'm, I'm really sick of comparing Johnny Manziel to Russell Wilson, but I almost can't help myself. I see a lot of similarities between the two. I think Manziel has more... Uh, escapability, obviously. Uh, he's willing to make uh, nothing out of something, and Wilson is the same way, but uh, Manziel really risks his body, uh, unlike, unlike uh, Manziel really risks his body, unlike Wilson. Uh, Wilson is smart enough to slide, and that's something that Manziel needs to learn. But I think that Manziel going to the Jacksonville Jaguars would be good for the NFL, and I think it would be good for the Jaguars because they've had a really tough time uh, filling out their stadium the past few years, and I really see that being a good fit with Manziel having to play against Jadavion Clowney uh, twice a year, and Manziel having to play against Andrew Luck twice a year. So, really ignite that AFC South uh, division, and I see that happening. I definitely do. I think there's mutual interest there. I don't think that there's many pieces around uh, for Manziel to really throw to besides Justin Blackman and uh, Cecil Shorts, but uh, the running game is weak. That's, that's somewhat of a concern, them losing Maurice Jones-Drew. That might be a position that they might address later in the draft, uh, but I definitely see Manziel going uh, number three overall to Jacksonville. Number four, the Cleveland Browns. Uh, once again, we're talking about the Browns picking in the bottom five of the draft. Uh, they just can't seem to find that right coach uh, to get them in you know, the, the position that they need to be in. Um, but this year, they fired Rob Chudzinski, who was only their coach for one season, and many of their fans were a little uh, ape shit, you could say, about uh, the fact that they fired him. And they brought in Buffalo, former Buffalo Bills defensive coordinator Mike Pettin, and as a Buffalo Bills fan, I believe that that was a good hire. Uh, most people say that he was the last resort for the Browns, but I don't he might have been, but that's a pretty good last resort. Uh, last year, what he did in that one season with the Bills defense, he uh, broke Buffalo records, um, which is actually says a lot because back in the 90s, Buffalo had defenses that had Bruce Smith, Daryl Talley, Cornelius Bennett, Nate Odoms, um, guys that really could play. And he broke the single-season sacks record with, with his, under his defense. Um, Buffalo was able to break that record, and Buffalo does have a lot of talent defensively, but so does Cleveland. Now they they got Carlos Dansby, Dante Whitner, uh, and free agency. I think those two additions will really help them defensively, even though those guys are towards the end of their careers, but I still think those guys have a lot left. Uh, Barkevius Mengo was their first-round selection last year. I think he's going to have a very big year under Mike Pettin, but as far as what they do with their fourth overall selection, same predicament as Jacksonville. I believe that their number one need is a quarterback. And most people are high on Teddy Bridgewater, but I'm not. Uh, and, and the reason being is because uh, I noticed that he, and, and it's well documented, that he plays with gloves. And I don't like guys that play with gloves. I feel like uh, it's not exactly a good thing that they need to rely on the gloves as much as he does in order to attain success uh, throwing the football. And when he took the gloves off for his pro day, he did not look as uh, accurate, which is something that he's known for. He missed a lot of throws. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping for the Cleveland fans that they do not pick Bridgewater. I'm hoping that they go with Blake Bortles, the UF, UCF 
uh, University of Central Florida quarterback. He's big, 6'5", 240 pounds. It was well documented on sports science that they put him through these crazy uh, pass rushing drills where the, these these pass rushers were rushing at him, and he had to complete passes from 20 yards in these tiny little holes, and he was able to complete the passes. His accuracy is, is pretty crazy. And Out of all the quarterbacks besides Manziel, I would say that he has the highest ceiling. I think that he'd fit in with Cleveland well, being the fact that Cleveland is an underrated city, uh, even though they have a high crime rate and, and stuff like that. There's a lot to do in Cleveland, and he's got that rugged, intense uh, personality. He's a bearded guy. Um, and a big guy. He reminds me of Ben Roethlisberger. I think that that would be a good fit for Cleveland for them to finally get the right guy at quarterback. They've, they've rifled through guys like Brady Quinn and Brandon Whedon, uh, and those did not work out. Uh, Tim Couch back in the 90s, uh, late 90s. Um, but I think Bortles will definitely work out if they were to pick him here. Number five, the Oakland Raiders. One could say that uh, the Raiders had probably the most underrated offseason uh, in this year's uh, offseason, being the fact that they were able to get some veteran players. Uh, Justin Tuck uh, from the Giants, Lamar Woodley from the Steelers, Matt Schaub, as I mentioned earlier, acquired in a trade. They sent their sixth-round draft choice to Houston for Schaub, which I thought was a steal. Um, they signed Maurice Jones-Drew, and they re-signed Darren Mc McFadden. Uh, which most people didn't think they were going to do, neither did I, but they did, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's very interesting that they have a very dynamic running game, and Jones, Drew, and McFadden, even though both guys are fairly injury-prone, I think that in a timeshare, those guys could be really effective together. One thing that Oakland doesn't necessarily have is a wide receiver for Schaub to connect with. The debate is Sammy Watkins out of Clemson, or Mike Evans at an A&M, which one is better? Um, most people say Watkins is better. Uh, I like Evans better, personally. But I think, ultimately, uh, based on the film and based on the review of a lot of analysts, I think Watkins from Clemson, Sammy Watkins, the wide receiver from Clemson, will be the pick here. And the reason why is because he has very good uh, escapability as far as breaking speed, and that's something that uh, the Davis family really enjoys having, something that they really love. Uh, Al Davis's model of drafting was to get fast wide receivers, and Sammy Watkins is that. He's a guy that can break tackles. He's a guy that can make people miss. Uh, he would easily be the number one wide receiver in Oakland already, uh, in instantly, uh, if, if Oakland were to draft him. And I think that Oakland has really lacked that number one wide receiver since the days of Tim Brown and uh, Jerry Rice uh, back at the Super Bowl appearance. Number six overall is the Atlanta Falcons, and wow, did they have a weird year. A lot of injuries. Julio Jones uh, out for the season, the majority of the season anyway. Roddy White was, was here and there. Um, Tony Gonzalez is now gone. Uh, but most importantly, their defense was atrocious. It was one of the worst defenses in the league. Uh, they were they failed to really maintain any uh, consistent numbers pass rushing wise, and they really need a linebacker. And there's a lot of good ones in this draft. One being Jadavion Clowney. Uh, even though he's rated rated as a defensive end, most people believe that he will be moved to linebacker. But I already got him gone at number one with the Texans. Um, I believe that. The biggest need is linebacker, and the and the number one linebacker besides Clowney is Khalil Mack out of Buffalo, uh, UB, and I am a Buffalo native, so I know firsthand how Mack can play and what he brings. Um, Mack was a recruit out of Florida, uh, one of the best linebackers in the state. Uh, I'll state this, all all this, all that, uh, and he was heavily recruited by Buffalo, and they went to great lengths to get to get him because they believed that he was a top uh, future draft talent. And they, they recruited him. They brought him in. Uh, Buffalo is a Division I program. Uh, and the MAC conference is really getting better uh, with teams like UB and Toledo uh, and my, Miami of Ohio who produced Ben Roethlisberger. Um, so there's been good players coming out of that conference. You can't necessarily say that Mac might not be one of those guys because in big time games, the game that really made his draft stock rise 
was the one against Ohio State. He had a few sacks and a fumble return for a touchdown. Uh, he was very good against Ohio State at Ohio State and was really the torch that carried uh, the guy that carried the torch for UB for the majority of the season. I think that Mac has, has all the potential in the world. I think he'd be a good fit for Atlanta. And I have him picked here at sixth overall. Number seven overall, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, new regime, Lovey Smith um, brought in as a head coach, and it didn't take too long for him to be back into the league only one season after being let go by the Bears uh, in two seasons prior, two seasons ago. Uh, I really believe that Lovey Smith is a great coach. I think everywhere he's been, he's had success. Uh, that last year against Chicago, sometimes your voice kind of gets stale to the players, and they just needed a change. They needed a more offensive-minded coach, and uh, that's why they hired Mark Tressman, um, who, was a, who was a quarterback guru. Um, but I believe that Tampa Bay made a great hire by bringing in Lovey Smith. I think he fits the scheme, the mold very well, obviously. He's got great history there, uh, being a defensive coordinator under Tony Dungy. Uh, under Dungy's first really uh, stellar years as a head coach. And I think that Tampa Bay knows what they need. Uh, defensively, they, they're pretty stout. They have Deshaun Goldson. Uh, they let go Rivas, but their linebacking core is good. Gerald McCoy at defensive tackle. Um, I really believe that they need to get weapons for their offense. Doug Martin is a question mark at running back now with that torn labrum, but uh, two years ago he was one of the best linebacker sorry, running backs in the league. Um, so Doug Martin might be coming back now. I'm hearing good things about him, so I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for him. Um, Mike Glennon was drafted uh, last year at quarterback, and he played uh, sporadically for the for the Buccaneers, and he was, he was okay. He wasn't great, but then again, he was a rookie, so I think they'll stick with him. They did, they did sign Josh McCown, uh, in free agency who has some ties with Lovey Smith in Chicago. Uh, so McCown might possibly be their starter uh, going into the start of the season. And I think a great piece for McCown to throw to would be Texas A&M wide receiver Mike Evans, who I mentioned earlier is the 1B versus 1A of Watkins and Evans. Uh, I think that Evans is, has more potential to be really good given his physical skills. He's a 6'5", 235 wide receiver. He's built uh, very top-heavy, very bottom-heavy as well. But his wingspan is crazy. Uh, probably 38-inch arms at, at least. Um, and I think that he's definitely, uh, definitely going to 38-inch uh, vertical at least. Uh, I think he's definitely going to be a, a very good wide receiver in this league, and I think he makes sense for Tampa Bay at 7. Minnesota Vikings pick 8th, and according to where I have uh, the, the direction I have this draft going, I think that this pick for them is going to end up being a bad one. Uh, I'm not high on Teddy Bridgewater at all. I think he's a good guy. He seems like a nice guy, but I really don't think that uh, he is a good pick for anyone uh, at this point. Um, I think the decision for them will be quarterback, and the only two that really jump out at you are uh, Derek Carr and uh, Teddy Bridgewater. And Bridgewater um, is the buzzworthy pick to Minnesota. I have to hopefully, I'm hoping uh, for their sake and for their fans' sake, I'm a Buffalo fan, and I know what it's like to, to not win, and Minnesota and Buffalo have kind of had similar franchise history is losing four Super Bowls. Uh, unlike Buffalo, they weren't four in a row, but they did lose four Super Bowls. And I really hope that they go with Derek Carr at this pick. I think that it's high. Uh, most people have him picked between 15 to 22, uh, but I don't think them taking Bridgewater is the best move for them. As I mentioned earlier, he plays with gloves on. He would be playing, he wouldn't be playing in a dome. Uh, like he was, like he would have been if he was drafted a few years ago. They don't play in a dome anymore. Uh, they play outside. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yes, they do. Um, and I just don't see that pick making sense for them. I think Derek Carr makes more sense. I think Mike Zimmer is an old school head football coach that would preach that Derek Carr would make more sense for them. He's an accurate passer. Uh, reminds me of his brother David. So I think that's the pick. 
That's all I got for the first eight picks. Tune in for the next one. Thanks, guys.